All right, we're gonna have a get real moment here. And yes, this is Daisy's little poop bag that I take with me in my bra. <laughs> All right, so the get real moment. I have heard this now from several people who have quite a bit of weight to lose. And I feel it's an important conversation to have. When somebody is struggling with emotional eating and they are not bringing pleasure into their life, they're not doing things to give back to themselves, to take breaks, they will always default to pleasure food. It's just what you'll do or alcohol. You will always default to those things because they're quick, they're easily accessible, and what I have said now to many people is, hey, look, you want to lose weight. Your habit is to come home after a long day of work, crush it hard, and then you default to eating out of the pantry to, quote unquote, feel better. But what, what if we took that 20, 30 minutes and you lay down and take a nap? You read a book for pleasure. You maybe do your craft or your hobby or you watch one of your favorite movies or something like that. And the pushback I get is, Heather, that's just not who I am. I'm not someone who can lay down and take a nap. I'm not someone who's going to do things on purpose for pleasure. I feel the need to just get productive things done and check things off my list. And my response the last two weeks is, that behavior has pushed you up to 300 pounds. That behavior is pushing you up to a very high weight that you're not happy with. Your behaviors, your habits, not just the food you eat, not just the exercise you do or do not do, but the way that you view yourself, that limiting belief, I'm somebody who can't put a nap in, can't put pleasure in. That's just not who I am. Well, who you are and who you've been is why you got to the weight you are. <laughs> and I know because I was you. I was the 300 plus pound person who didn't make time for naps, who didn't make time for pleasure. She was go, 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 start a project, get a project done, check, 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 check. And you know what? She checked herself into getting the highest weight that she possibly could. Now I take it back, I could have been higher. But the point is, you see what I'm saying? I believed that about myself. Cut to Heather today. I put in massages. I put in pedicures. I put in to go sit down by the pool and read with my kids. I take 30 minute bubble baths where I read for pleasure. I put breaks in for Heather so Heather doesn't just commit to eating what's in the pantry to feel better, which is what I used to do. I used to give myself no pauses, no breaks, and so I was constantly reaching into the pantry for chocolate, for candy, for whatever, because I deserved it, gosh darn it. Did everyone see how hard I was working? <laughs> <laughs> of course they did, but they aren't going to be the ones that come in and tell me I need to take a break. They aren't going to be the ones that pace me. I have to pace me. And if your excuse for why you won't change this about yourself is this is the way you've always done it, this is who you are, and you're more attached to that identity than you are to getting better, then get used to being the weight you are or probably gaining more weight quite honestly. And I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but that story you're telling yourself is holding you back. If you want to get into a lower weight, if you want to have a better relationship with food, if you want to feel appreciated, cared for, you have to do it. And it starts with changing the story you tell yourself about yourself. What if you change the story to being, I'm an amazing loving, caring person who expresses love to myself first because I want to feel good so I can give more to others. What if that became your story? Because if you love and care for yourself, you give yourself what you actually need, then you stop using food to cope with the crazy amount of work and stress you're putting on yourself and you actually take good care of your body. You put a little joy into your life, so then you can take better care of everyone else. But don't martyr yourself, please. I used to martyr myself. Look at how hard I'm working. I work harder than anyone else. Yes, and it also caused me to eat a crud ton of unhealthy food and be a very high unhealthy weight. So there's give and take. When there's no balance, there's no balance. So if you are somebody who believes you have to work hard all the time, never putting in fun, never putting in relaxation, never putting in downtime, 
and you're constantly defaulting to whatever you just happen to come across, you will always be in this cycle because you naturally need it. People can only handle so much. Your body is giving you signals. It can't keep up with the workload you're putting on it. Every time you feel yourself mentally starting to check out and look for food, you maybe need a break. You have to listen to that. And that's really, really important. So I just want to encourage you, if you say that often, this is who I am, this is how I do things, start to question that. Like, is that really serving you? Because what I started to realize was, unless I was happy staying where I was, weight-wise, the person Heather used to be has to change. I can't be so married to this identity I've created for myself that I'm willing to sacrifice my health and my weight to that identity that easily could change if you put in the effort. All right, guys, I hope this loving message hits you right in the keister. <laughs> Please like and subscribe, hit the bell icon, and let me know how I can better serve you. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.